Welcome to another Light Blade Learning Lab. Today we're going to be talking about lenses again, but lenses are very important because they focus the light energy or the beam energy that we've got coming out of this machine down into a very small point which is where the work is done. The beam itself is, as we found out, maybe eight, nine, ten millimeters diameter. It's quite large. Most of the energy is concentrated in the central section, probably within the central 50% of the beam. All the energy that we can collect is concentrated down through the lens into a very, very small area. Here I've got some of my hairs, which you can hardly see. Now if I measure one of those hairs, we can see that it is 0.04, 0.05 millimetres diameter. Double that up to 0.1, and that's the size of the laser beam that we are probably going to get on the best lens that we can probably find for this machine, and that's a one and a half inch lens. Now when you start getting up to a two inch, two and a half, and a four inch lens, those numbers start growing considerably, maybe up to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 even. Now, 0 0.3 is still not very thick, but it makes a huge difference to the way in which the power is delivered onto the surface. Now look, here I've got a, a tool that I've just picked up out of my workshop. It's got a very sharp point on one end and a blunt section on the other end. Here I'm going to press as hard as I possibly can on that card and wobble it around with that end. How much of an impression have I made? Not very much. Now I'm going to press the same amount of energy because I haven't changed my strength and I'm doing exactly the same thing with the other end. Now there's a pretty significant hole in there that's nearly through to the other side. This one, well, it's hardly marked the surface. There's a mark on there, but I can feel that it's just the smallest dent. And this is a very soft card, so I would have expected to have caused more damage than that. But the reason why I haven't caused more damage is because the energy that I'm able to put into that is spread over a much, much larger area. Whereas when I do it this way around, the energy is concentrated into that point. And so the point is an energy concentrator. Basically what we've got, we've got a much higher, and you'll hear me using this term a lot, the energy density, the energy per square millimetre, is a lot greater when I do that than it is when I do that. And that's the principle of why we use different lenses. And you will say, well, OK, if we use a lens that produces a, a, a shape like that, a very thin, hair-like um, beam, we've got huge energy density, we can do a lot of damage to the product, why don't we just use one of those? The answer is in this very crude little diagram that I've put here. We may be able to concentrate the energy in a very small area, as opposed to the larger area that we saw demonstrated in my mechanical demonstration. But the one and a half inch lens focuses the light like this. It's a very sharp shaped lens which goes down to a sharp point, but it goes down to a sharp point quite quickly and expands again very quickly. So its useful working length is actually very short. Now this one, which is the two inch lens, okay, it's got a bigger footprint, but its working length, where the energy density remains reasonably constant, is larger. And this one, which is the two and a half inch, has got an even shallower beam shape. And it has a working length which is much longer. So you've got these strange properties associated with the focused light. You can either have 
lots of energy over a very small length, or you can have less energy over a much longer length. And this is the trade-off you've got between lenses. Now, what we're going to do today is I'm going to try and turn these drawings into a real picture. In other words, I've got my focus gauge here, which runs from the focal point plus four millimeters to the focal point minus four millimeters. Okay, now my intention is to draw a line along here and hopefully if I get it right I will manage to get the focal point in the middle and so we can see that the change of line thickness and power or density energy density changes as we move along the line because at this point here we've got a big footprint and at this end we've got a big footprint we've got a very small one in the middle so it means our energy density at the top here is very small and in the middle it's very high and we get less of a change with these because although we might be starting off at the same length the same diameter we don't get we come down in a much shallower curve right now I'm just going to do a quick pulse test to make sure that my beam is approximately in the right place to give me good consistent power That looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to bore you to death with hundreds and hundreds of results. What I'm going to do is to show you my method and then we'll work on from there. I, I will carry on working and show you the end results. Now what I've got here is my focus ramp which takes me from zero in one millimeter steps out to four millimeters plus and four millimeters minus. Now I'm going to pop that in there and actually what I've got this time, I've got some card and it's one millimetre thick card so it's nice and stiff so that when I pop it in here there is no chance that it's going to flex in any way at all. In other words this surface here is going to be as flat as the reference that I can produce on here. And I've also used my metal surface here, my flat metal surface because I know that that is true. Well I can see that I've got a two inch lens here and a two and a half inch lens so by default that one must be a one and a half inch lens and what we're going to try and do to, to start with is I'm going to turn this over the other way like this and I'm going to try and set this so that the power just burns through somewhere around about the focal point. Okay, so we're starting off these tests with a speed of 100 millimeters a second and a power of 25%. Now I've got no idea what that is in terms of watts, but we'll sort that out later. I've got the focal point set to 7.5 millimeters. Okay, let's look at our result. Have we got what we're looking for? Yes, we have. Now, what we've got here, we've got something that runs from two and a half plus to about one minus. It's about a millimeter too high. So what we've got to do is to put that back in there again. And instead of seven and a half millimeters, we really ought to drop that down to six and a half millimeters. Same speed, same power. And there we go, look, we've moved it down now. We've gone from, we're roughly one and a, about one and three quarters to two and a quarter. So we may well have gone too much. But what we're now going to do is we're gonna change the power slightly because this is cut through as you can see this is cut through and what I want to do is try and decrease that length now ah there we go right up the middle 15% we're just about making it through just about making it through and would you believe it looks as though it's about minus one and just about plus one maybe one and a half so we still might be a little bit out on centering but that's not bad 
So we'll do a result on the front so we can see what the dimensions are. Now this is a two and a half inch lens test which is typical of the other tests that I've just been doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set the power and the power has got to be set up to 70% actually. Now we do it this way just so that we've got something to measure on the front. Here we are looking at the scorched line for the 2 inch focal length lens. Now this is the line as it entered the bottom of the ramp. This is 4 millimeters below the focal point. Now you'll see that they look like a couple of tram lines along there. But when we look a bit closer and tip the card up you can clearly see that it's a V groove cut by the laser itself into the card. But I'd like you to look at the top of the V and I think you can see there's a very small, almost a fillet radius on the top of the V where the power has dropped off quite dramatically. Now I'm going to basically, for, for these measurement purposes, I'm going to ignore the little fillet radius on the top of the V because that basically has got no significant power. It's enough to scorch the edge but that's all it's doing. So what I'm really interested in is the powerful cutting piece towards the centre where the V is going all the way down from its vertical walls. So what I'm going to do is measure all positions between minus 4 and plus 4 to get 9 results. And then we'll take a look at the shape of the line. Now I have a glass graticule which is marked off in 0.1 millimetre divisions. It's, it's possible with this microscope to, to reasonably accurately measure the dimensions. I mean, I'm, I'm, once I get below 0.1 of a millimetre, which is the division that you can see on here, you can easily estimate to half a tenth, which is 0 0.05. 0 0.025, well, that's a little bit flaky, but I've attempted it in a few places. Well, here we are measuring the dimension right at the end, which is the minus 4 position. Then we're moving along to the minus 3 position. I've quickly taken you all the way through to zero. Over the course of four millimetres, I think you can see how dramatically the, um, the line has changed. So just in case it's confusing, with the graticule in the way, I'll show you a series of pictures which start from the lens here at four millimetres, and then three millimetres, and then two millimetres, and then one millimetre, and then zero. That's how the beam width is changing as it goes from four down to zero, the focus point. Well, after a lot of tedious repetitive work, we finish up with this rather daunting array of figures here. Now, don't get too upset because it's actually very, very simple. Let me just explain. Let's start off here at this two and a half inch focal length lens. And what we find is we've got the focus point here at zero and then we've got plus or minus four millimeters above and below the focus point. Now, the beam diameter translates to a beam area. And this is the area in square millimetres in this next column. And then what we've got across here are 10, 20, 30, all the way through to 100 watts of power that could be going through the lens. So if we had, as in my case, a 60 watt tube, that doesn't mean to say there were 60 watts going through the lens, but let's just stay with 60 watts. Now right at the focal point, we have the smallest possible beam that we can get and in this instance it was 0.18 of a millimeter. Now we translated that diameter into an area, square millimeter area. So if we squeezed 10 watts into 0 0.025 square millimeters we would finish up with 393 watts per square millimeter. It's just a standard definition and that is called energy density. Now we've calculated the energy density for different wattages for that same spot size and you can see how the energy density creeps up. Why, do we in, why are we interested in energy density? Every particular material 
will have a threshold of damage burning damage because basically that's what our beam is doing it's burning the material now that threshold may be a thousand watts per square millimeter it may be 10,000 watts per square millimeter it's difficult to say because there is no information out there on the internet which tells me what this burning threshold is now for this exercise I used card which had some sort of substance or body to it it was one millimeter thick and it required a noticeable amount of power to cut through it the amount of energy required to cut through that card will ultimately def be defined by the energy density itself that it can resist but I'm suspecting that card the card that I used is probably sitting here with an energy density of probably somewhere in the region of only maybe four or five hundred now if we were to draw a line a vertical line through those three graphs at roughly where my arrow is which is about 500 watts per square millimeter I suspect that at 500 watts per square millimeter I would probably be somewhere near the damage threshold for that card but the reason why I want to bring that to your attention is because each one of these lenses and we're looking at the 60 watt energy density for the lenses is capable of exceeding the energy density required to damage that card so that means that any of those lenses I could use to cut the card okay something else rather interesting about these pictures is the way that they actually describe the type of lens they are imagine these to be three different types of knife one of them very sharp like a scalpel this one being a bit like a, a pen knife and this one being more like a butter knife now I think if I give you that analogy you will clearly see that it doesn't require much effort to cut something with a scalpel it would require more effort to cut the same thing with a pen knife and a lot more effort to try and cut it with a blunt butter knife that will help you to visualize how and why you would want to use a certain type of lens we've already seen that this sharp lens can cut with as little as 17 watts whereas in fact cutting the same material with a, a blunt lens takes 54 watts and I hope that that clearly describes the difference between these sets of lenses now I, now I need you to do a little bit of mental gymnastics because I want to bring you back to the fact that I used 110 millimeters per second speed to do all of these tests I could have used this and let's call it a blunt lens which takes 54 watts to cut through the material at 110 millimeters a second I could have used 15 watts to cut through the same material but I would have had to do it at very very much slower speed it certainly has more power than the damage threshold of the material so it will definitely cut the material but it won't cut it as efficiently if we were to use the red lens with 15 watts of power we would probably have to run it at maybe 10 maybe even less than that millimeters per second to achieve a cut whereas cutting that same cardboard with the sharp lens we can do it at 110 millimeters per second that again hopefully reinforces why you would want to use the right lens for the right job if you're only ever cutting thin materials why would you ever go and use a two and a half inch lens or a two inch lens when you can slice through it at a much faster speed with a one and a half inch lens so if you're only using one and a half and two millimeter thick material it's a no-brainer if you've only got a 60 watt machine so I hope these illustrations have demystified why you were supplied with three lenses and why you might want to seek a fourth lens in your armory depending on the power of machine that you've decided to buy so longer length lens requires more powerful machines 
and more powerful machines means you can cut thicker materials. So I hope this begins to remove some of the mystery about why you would want different types of lenses. Okay, now there was another very good reason why I've approached these tests in the manner that I did. I used a thickish card, I used a constant speed, but what I did was to vary the power to just get a cut through the material for each one of these three lenses. Technically what that means is I was using the card as a measure of the energy density that was in the beam. In other words I had to have the same amount of energy density available in each one of these lenses to just cut through the card. And what we can do is we can look at the results the backward way round. I was using 70% power which when I look it up on my calibration chart which I've got for the tube it was approximately 62 watts. Now we assume that we're going to lose power through the mirrors. There's three mirrors each losing 3% let's just assume and a lens which could be another 3% so we could be losing as much as 12% through the transmission system before we get down to the work. So the available power at the work could be as little as 54 watts. Now I don't know this for a fact because I didn't measure it. 54 watts divided by 0.025 square millimetres gives us an energy density of 2160 watts per square millimetre. When we do that same calculation for the 2 inch lens where we were able to use 20% power which was 28 watts less the 12% brought us down to 25 watts so we divide 25 watts by the area of the beam at the focal point we get 2080 watts and similarly when we do the same result here for the one and a half inch lens we find ourselves using 16% power which is equivalent to 17 watts less the 12% is 15 watts and when we do that calculation again with the uh, area of the footprint we find that we get 2300 watts per square millimetre. Now I hope you can see that it's not perfect but it's in the right sort of region. We've got a typical we've got a typical energy density here which we're using to damage this material which is around about 2100 2200 watts per square millimetre. Now this was never meant to be a perfect scientific experiment and I never expected to get results maybe quite as good as this but it does demonstrate clearly that that material regardless of the lens that we fire at it has got the same damage threshold. It would be good to know what the damage threshold for different materials is because then we could exploit the lenses and, and predict what the lenses were going to be capable of. Now you may consider that's going to be a bit of a futile waste of effort considering the next subject that we're going to be looking at is cutting parameters. Cutting parameters are something that you do not predict. You laboriously sit down with your machine and work through the variables and once you've got an ideal set of data you log that data and that then becomes your cutting parameters. Until the next session when we'll be talking about cutting parameters, thank you very much for your attention today and I hope this has been of some benefit to you.